Hi, welcome. So this is uh, how you set up the custom head that I do for the Robox to work um, purely within Automaker. Um, it's, it, it's slightly more complicated than getting it to work um, if you were going to use Cura Engine or the Cura 4.xx as your, as your slicing software and then just transfer a, a G-code file via this function here. Um, but it it still works absolutely fine. It's just a few more a few more steps. So okay. So the first thing you need to do is um, with the a purchase of the head, you'll get a uh, this CBJ single X experimental Robox head file. Uh, and the reason why you need a different head file is because it uses a different thermistor um, to the one that the Robox uses. Uh, so the, the beta and the TCAL are quite different. Uh, it'll also go up to quite a bit higher temperature as well because it's an all-metal end all, all the way through and there's quite a lot of cooling for the um, the, the filament path. Um, unfortunately, um, in Automaker, as I've just called it, a, you know, this different type code, it won't, um, you won't be able to slice anything at all if you uh, stick the this head definition as it is and you write that to the EEPROM it'll, it'll, it'll work in terms of heating the head up but so you try and click um, make in Automaker it, it doesn't understand what this head type is and it won't create um, it won't basically send the STL file to the Cura engine to be sliced just won't work so the way to uh, work around that is this head file that is supplied you have to effectively sacrifice one of these heads that you, that you probably don't use. Um, the, easy, the easiest one to, to change uh, that makes sense is this is a single X experimental so what I would suggest you do is first you just take a copy of that paste into there and call it robot's head back or something like that and get rid of that copy. So you've got the original. There we go. So you've got the the original single X head settings if you, if you need it. So in the single X one, uh, it's quite straightforward. Really, open this one, grab all of the code, copy, and in the single X one, overwrite all of that with the other code. There we go. And that there needs to be RBX. So the other thing, interesting thing to note here, um, for this to seamlessly work in Cura as well, is the head comes supplied with a, a nozzle diameter of 0.4 so this value here in the head file is so that uh, when you add something to the platter and you click make, it knows what nozzle diameter to tell Cura, the Cura slicing engine to use. So this this nozzle, like I say, it comes supplied with a 0.4, but if you decide you want to change the nozzle on the custom head, because it's a standard M6 um, threaded nozzle, so you could put a, an Olsen Ruby in there, a tungsten carbide, you could just put another brass nozzle in, there's a 0.4 or a 0.6 or a 0.8 if you do that if that's if, you know, if you, for whatever reason then change that value to be the right value uh, and then it all works seamlessly in order to make it knows that the nozzle is the right you know whatever diameter you set it to so like i said the head comes with a 0.4 so we'll leave it at that and it's got the right thermal and beta and tcals in there so click save Now with Automaker open, it never picks up the head files, it only ever reads all the config files at startup, so you need to close Automaker. And then I'll just fire it up again. Print. 
that's it. So it's a sing single X. Um, it still thinks it's 0.6 millimeter, but it, but it isn't. Um, look at the heading from. Now you can see it's picked up the the thermal and uh, beta and TCAL settings. Um, nozzle height, default Z height is too high there. You know, the default start when you do it, so that needs to be 0.2. So we'll save that. Uh, and yeah, ignore the fact that it says it's a 0.6 there. That seems to be a graphic or text. It's, it's hard hard coded inside Automaker somewhere. It's not set by a config files. Uh, and it's um, so that's a 0.4 with the custom head fitted, and you're almost ready to go now. The only other thing you need to do is because it uses a pretty pokey, uh, I think 50 or 60 watt heater cartridge, you need to change the PID settings so that the, um, it doesn't overshoot and you get a stable target temperature when you try and set the temperature on the nozzle. So M503 that lists all the basic firmware things you can play with uh, and the one that we're interested in is this nozzle tempcom so it's interesting actually it's this this pi and d settings are what you know it's a control if you're familiar with control or there that's a pid controller and it's a it's a proportional integral and differential bit that control how quickly when you demand a temperature out of the controller that it gets there and stays there and holds it so interestingly it's the same values of pi and d all the different head types. So you may have noticed, or certainly I have, that you know, the old, the, the quick fills, either version one or version two, have quite a large heater cartridge in there because it's a single heat block, uh, and it heats up pretty well. To be honest, it heats up yeah, perfectly fine. But the dual materials, um, you know, the, with the two, you know, the dual material, the 0.4 nozzles, and the smaller heater blocks and smaller heaters, mine always used to take a lot longer to get up to temperature and that, that sort of last 20 degrees or 15 degrees the temperature increments would be a lot slower than like maybe one or two degrees every few seconds it always used to crawl up to the target temperature uh, and that's you know I suspect basically because these were tuned originally for the, the quick fill and all the quick fill V2 so it's the same size heater element but these settings don't aren't optimized for other heater blocks uh, it's a bit of a shame you can't sort of store these with the heady problem and it would be you know, a bit better. Um, but you can't. So basically what you have to do is, if you go, which, along with the serial, um, you need to change this value here, this M301. So I'll just grab that. Currently they're at 8 to the minus 2, 1.1 to the minus 4, and 2.2 to the minus 1. So if you send that, and then do another M503, just to check it's picked up. The nozzle temp con now it is 8 to the minus 3, 1.1 to the minus 4, uh, and 5 to the minus 2. So that's different to what it was before. So, last thing to do is an M500, and that saves those PID settings. Uh, and that's it. So your head's ready to go now, so if you want to heat it up, just for example, put an M4 in there, and do S180. So here you go, so you can start to see it heating up. And you notice it's, uh, it's quite quite quick um, it's sort of jumping up 7 to 10 what's that, 61 about 8 degrees a set each time uh, now it will overshoot the target temperature slightly which is generally how you're supposed to have a, a good control system uh, so it'll overshoot up and then it'll the I and the D uh, parts of the PID control will come in and start to control the uh, the gain and it'll, it'll eventually settle quite nicely at the target temperature you can see it has overshot by you know, nearly 20 degrees and then it'll start to come down now. And if you look at the graph over here, you know it's gone within 50, 
30 seconds, it's got to 200 degrees, which is you know, pretty, pretty quick. Uh, and it's, so it's got, you'll see, sort of classic, that's almost at the optimum um, gain and the damping settings for, for PID control, it's slight overshoot and it comes down to where it should be. And it'll just settle at 180 degrees. ready. So if you go to layout, I've got a part here, and um, we'll go to next, um, not got material fitted, so I'll just pick one. There you go, you can see that it's 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 working, it's working out the time it's going to take to print, and if I wanted to do a custom profile, I mean I haven't used this for forever, I, d I just do not use Automaker for anything. Um, which is Cura. Uh, it's for me miles better, uh, much better visualization. You've got all the all the settings that you need if you need them. Um, I just don't use it. But there you go. You can see it's calculated. And if I go back to the course, it's going to take an hour. I'm going to click make and then I'm going to kill it. Um, so there you go. Do it on that. There you go. Off it goes. It slices it. Post processes it transfers it to the printer and be off but I'm going to cancel it because I don't want to print anything Pause. cancel and that's it so yeah you basically need to just to recap it's a little bit more complex than doing it just with Cura so you need to copy this head file into the heads definition area you then need to take all the text in there and sacrifice it into one of the other known files that Automaker uh, head types that it knows about. So I pick the single X one and obviously back up the single X before you do it. Do that. That sets the head to have the right, so, so you can set the head to have the right uh, TCAL and B2 uh, TCAL settings. So once you've done that, you then have to dive into here um, and change the PID settings in here to be from these standard ones which are there to the uh, to the different ones um, so it's got the right because it's such a powerful heater in there it's got the right control around it uh, and then store those with an M500 Otherwise, you'll lose them. You don't have to store them. You can you can do it every time. You use the printer if you want. You, know, you can you can type the PID settings in, but you will forget at one point, and you'll see the head go and heat up massively. Uh, and that's that's basically it. Uh, the only other thing, just as a good reminder, is if you've got this uh, this head definition, the single X one. If you just remember this this nozzle diameter, if you decide. You now you've got the full flexibility to change the nozzle to whatever nozzle size you want. You know you can put something ridiculous at a one mil nozzle in if you really want. Uh, but you must change this value here, and it'll it uses that value when you click make. That value along with some of these other ones around the offsets and everything, they're all transferred through to the uh, the Cura engine, which then will then do and go and slice the part, and then the Robox post process script runs after that to finalise it into Robox uh, G code. So yeah, you can change this nozzle diameter to suit whatever nozzle you want, and the custom head comes, it's a standard uh, heater block and a standard M6 nozzle, so you can fit whatever you like. Uh, okay, uh, hopefully that's useful, uh, thanks very much.